So welcome to another of our Viva Connection sessions. Um, we're running these sessions as a little introduction to our speakers for Viva 2019. And we're delighted to have with us today uh, Paul Wilding, who's going to be speaking for us at our fifth Viva. We're delighted to be, I think John's been to every single Viva that we've had so far. So we're delighted to, to have her as one of our speakers this year. And um, what we're doing with these Viva Connection sessions is we, we've, we've decided that a way for us to, to bring value to you as you listen in, um, to what Dawn's got to say is that we're asking some really commonly asked questions in the three principles um, community. When people come across the three principles, it's like the, 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 the questions that arise very commonly for people. So I'm going to hand over to Sue quickly and um, she's going to introduce Dawn for us. Well, Dawn, I'm delighted, to, first of all, to be able to call you a good friend. Um, and the fact that you've been to Viva has been marvellous. And I've been itching to sort of think, oh, this is the year. This is the year. And anyway, that, that you're going to join us as a speaker. And really what to say is that your whole, you know, your work is based around health and well-being. So it's a, quite a broad umbrella that takes in the studying that you have done with homeopathy, nutrition and body work. So that's a lovely foundation, in, you know, in, in my opinion, a lovely foundation for health and well-being work. So the question that we're going to pose for you today is, what have the three P principles got to do with physical health? Well, um, for me, and hello everybody, it's, um, it, for me there's no difference. For me there's never been. Um, it, it came to me very soon after I started to come across the principles. Um, I was introduced to the principles through Ian Watson, um, who's also a, was a fellow homeopath. So the, 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 the slide into it just, it, it made sense of everything for me because we're, I, was, I always believed that health comes from the inside out. So that inside out thing just sat really well with me right from the very beginning. And um, it was always curious that, that it, it's in a lot of the things that I heard around the principles, everyone seemed to stop at, at the neck down. <laughs> and for me, it was everything. We are the principles, so therefore it's got to incorporate our physical health as well. And I can remember listening to Dick and Bettinger many, many years ago and him saying, and I'm sure Sydney Banks said it as well, if only everyone could be okay with their bad feelings. Well, if only everyone could be okay with their physical health, because our body is a complex um, biological network that's always trying to balance itself. It's just, um, it's, it's an amazing, it, it, it's, it's the formless energy coming to form in each individual. So it's constantly doing what it needs to do to feel the best we can. So I've come to understand that a sensation is, is just a little bit of information for us. Just a little bit of information for us to, to tr understand what's going on. So. We have the human operating system in respect of mind, thought and consciousness, but there's the human operating system doesn't stop there. It goes right through and it's telling us all of the time what we need to do. Is, is that helpful as a start? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's interesting when you say it like that for me because um, <clears throat> it is so tempting, isn't it, to, to be alarmed. Yes, alarmed by a thought, alarmed by a feeling. And we'll, a sensation will create a thinking around, you know, it's the, mm. the thinking around the sensation is what makes it a good or bad or a frightening experience for us. So um, I use just, say for instance, this is common for everyone, if you go out for a weekend and you're doing things that you don't normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to feel probably quite unwell for a few days after that. But it's the body's natural system just trying to correct itself. So the, sense that the, the body as an organism doesn't care what, what, what it does to us. The, the sensations will just be there. Um, so, for instance, if you've eaten too much um, and it causes a, a bloating, then you're going to feel that as a sensation. Now, if you just allow that to settle and correct itself by carrying on as you normally do, by 
know, drinking more and, and um, eating much more sensibly for a couple of days, that will settle down. But if you engage your thinking into that and start to think, oh my goodness, what's happening inside here? I haven't heard, felt this before. You can create more and more and more of, a, of an issue for your body to deal with because even a thought creates a chemical reaction that the body has to get rid of. So it, thoughts create energy that then the spent energy then has to be dealt with. So it's, an, it's, it's more of a burden <laughs> for the body to deal with. So on top of the hangover, you've then got the overthinking to deal with as well. And, so when and you're, that, sorry, sorry, you go. I was gonna say when you're working with clients, that, is that news to them largely? Yes. Yes, very often, very often. And it's not to belittle anything either, because, you know, we all know that there are awful health conditions that people have to deal with. So a big part of my job is to help people okay with whatever diagnosis they've got and, and see it so that they don't become their diagnosis. But, you know, that's a side issue. You're still you. With inside every single person, there is still that spark that is not broken you know we're born into the world we come from the formless however you imagine that that happens we come into the form and that that form is a decaying body eventually isn't it you know we it's it's an it's a vessel that we have um so we can do lots of things to to help that along but ultimately it's it's going to wear out but it it's a natural process. Every single thing we go through in life is a natural process that our body is perfectly equipped to deal with. And then you'll get the, ah, oh, but what about? So you can go down a rabbit hole with different diseases and try to analyze different diseases. And, and I, I don't come from a particularly um, academic viewpoint on this. I've always been able to grasp the concept and that I think is what's helped me so much with seeing it as, as I see people as whole. I never see anyone as broken. Even if their body is, you could, you know, you can list a lot of things that maybe is broken in, in, in other people's view. I never ever see a broken person or a broken spirit or a broken vitality. Because my teacher, my very first teacher, Robert Davison, I remember him saying, you're born with 100% energy and you will die with 100% energy. It's just where that energy is and what it's been used up for that makes the difference. So with that, it's, that, that, that was huge for me to see that because we, 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 we've always got capacity to improve ourselves in some way. You know, listening to you is kind of like, that's the hope again, which I heard right at the beginning when we were talking about really just about the mental and emotional side of things, because I didn't really think about the physical. And, and I, I can, that's what I'm hearing now is that the hopefulness that, imme that immediately comes with more strength than may have existed without that yeah. kind of understanding. Exactly. And, the, and then the person's experience has a different slant then it's a different it's a different way of being it's a different way of understanding and then you're not so frightened you know I spent a lot of my in, in my teenage years a lot I was I was almost bombarded with a lot of illness and a lot lot of heaven and that's probably why I'm where I am now and I was frightened for a long time. I was frightened of, of everything to do with health. If I had a headache, I had a brain tumor. If I had a, uh, you know, and, and because I knew that the ultimate could happen, I knew that it, it you know, my father had died really suddenly of a brain hemorrhage and, and, and several aunties had had awful illnesses and died very young. And so I knew the possibilities were there, but it, it then became that, that's, that was my life, that it's fearful, life, your body is, 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 can't be trusted. Maybe that's the way to say it, your body can't be trusted. So, um, and luckily enough, you know, I, I was a really keen swimmer. I was really, really interested in nutrition at the time, but because of all the things that happened, I didn't follow that path as I would have done. 
but I came across um, homeopathy and a good friend of mine is, a, is an amazing osteopath. So life and my body didn't become so frightening again. And, that, and now I really don't think of it in that way at all because I do understand that we, we are always doing the best we can with what we've got. And there's loads of ways that you can help that process along, but ultimately we're never broken. There's such a lot of reassurance in that message. Mm. Just, and that in itself is like a blanket. <laughs> it feels like a warm blanket. Oh, thanks. I'd forgotten. And we're all individuals, so you know you can help people to understand that from their point of view. To say these things sometimes when somebody's sitting there with something they're really anxious about or worried or you know got some um, diagnosis that they don't understand or you know this may sound a little bit as if you're belittling that and that's not what I'm saying at all not in any way shape or form but each individually you can always help people to to settle with what they've been dealt with in some ways and there's always ways to help them to improve that thank you there's like a, a natural pause isn't it <clears throat> i think there's a lot in there i think i might listen to you again <laughs> before we rec put this recording out thank you Dawn. that was really lovely to, to hear your experience um yeah so as i said we're looking forward to seeing you in spain again in uh, yeah, beginning of november come join the viva party on fifth birthday it's gonna be yeah i'm not so sure i'll be great at the dance steps <laughs> oh we'll have something we'll have something not about being great or good or anything it's just about enjoying it right <laughs> yeah. anyway it's tap dancing this year so you'll be fine oh, wow <laughs> thanks dawn thanks for your time dawn. Bye. bye bye to everyone bye bye, bye. right that's brilliant oh i love it